Hi, I'm your host, Vasco Duarte. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Team Tuesday this week with Victor Didenchuk. Hey, Victor, welcome back. Hi, Vasco. Glad to see you back as well. Absolutely. So today we're going to talk about teams and uh, uh, how sometimes they can become their own worst enemy. But uh, before that, do share with us, Victor, what was the book that was that most inspired you in your career as a Scrum Master? Um, so I think this is a swordless samurai. This is a book written by Masao Kitami, and it basically tells us the story of Toyotami Hideyoshi. Uh, he was kind of a ruler of Japan in 15th or 16th century, and basically it is a story of a guy who becomes a ruler of the country without any physical strength or without any power from the very beginning. But his real strength is, was the impact it it provided on the on the whole country. So these books it actually teaches some sort of timeless leadership principles that are still relevant today. Uh, his principles was about basically helping people. Uh, to to become effective, but you know, leading by example, communicative effectively, be decisive, build trust, empower others, and all other concepts which we somehow know from the beginning. We we know it from school, we know it from university, we know it everywhere. But the, the whole idea of the book, it's a first of all, it's a real story. It's a it's an interesting book in terms of it's it's nicely written. It has nice words. It has nice story. Uh, it has uh, a really nice summary after each each uh, chapter and the whole idea of this you know 16th century story which is still insightful these days which still kind of provides you a direction where to go with your team these days it, it it's really fascinating so i would say this is one of the most inspiring books i've uh, written recently and probably through my career uh, yeah and I really like the aspect of looking at the people, the core aspects of people and what you want to achieve. What is the vision? Because, of course, the leader needs to have a vision. Otherwise, what do they what would they be leading people to? Right. And, and you talked about how he helped people become effective. And there's many different aspects and there's, you know, there's an infinite number of situations. So it's not an easy task for a leader to help people to become effective. So we need to figure out those principles. Uh, the principles that you mentioned are, are talked about in this book. But I think this is also a call for us as Scrum Masters to create our own leadership principles, something that we keep ourselves accountable to. Like, did, did you do some reflection on that as well as a, uh, as a Scrum Master when you were reading that book? So probably the, the one I'm mostly interested in and, and I try to follow it is that it's not the people who failed, it's 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 you who failed. So I, I already discussed it during retrospective example that no matter what, what happened, if if you don't find the result as a facilitator, as a as a leader, you're responsible for, for the failure. So if if someone failed, it doesn't matter because probably you you were not good enough in motivating, you're not good enough in, in providing the environment, you're not good enough in coaching, whatever. So this is the one I'm trying to to to, to go with. So uh, obviously, it it is hard to admit that you've made a mistake, but when you admit it, you ju you just go and say so. No matter what happened, I'm responsible for this one. I take the damage. I go and I I I take this whatever feedback from stakeholders, customers, whatever. Uh, let's focus on how we can make it good. And don't get me wrong. Obviously radical feedback and following radical candor and sharing feedback with people when they when they did something wrong or had a behavior it does not contribute to the goal is one thing but the second is take the damage uh, if if you are the leader and you're trying to get the best result as possible it's always your fault if if it's failed and I really like that as a highlight to one of the core aspects of being a leader, because if if we don't take ownership, then we can't fix it. 
right? The moment yeah, yeah. we say somebody else fail, then you now have to fix other people probably against their will before anything can work as you expect it or as you need it. So uh, another book that I would uh, point to here is Extreme Ownership, which also talks about how important it is to accept that everything is our responsibility. And of course, we can decide to do something about it or not. It's still our decision whether we want to do something or not. But it's critical for us to accept the ownership of what happens to us. So uh, really great, really great story, really great message. Good so one. Victor. I'll but uh, uh, now we're going to talk about teams, um, mm -hmm. and sometimes teams do self-destruct despite or perhaps because of our best intentions. Uh, so let's investigate the story of a team that you worked with, understand their context a little bit, and then walk us through the steps. What were the things, the behaviors, the little things that happened in that team that started maybe as just some simple, not so important things, but eventually over time they grew and became a problem for the team. Mm -hmm. So the rumor is probably the highlight of this story. So it all started with a rumor that there are going to be a change, there are going to be an organization transformation. And you know, in a big organization, you, you can't con really control this thing. If it's, if it's created by someone, based on fact or without facts, it, it will start to disperse, it will start to it will be everywhere. It will infest all people. It will infest all teams. It will infest organization. And, and you need to act immediately. Unfortunately, for, for that specific team, the, the specific actions were not made at, at the point. So the rumor became even, even worse. No one addressed it. And when people started to actually, you know, because how did you notice it? Like, like as you, you as a scrum master, how did you notice that the rumor was actually taking hold of people's thoughts and, and imagination? So first of all, it, it's, you know, it, there is a specific feeling. You can't really view it or you can't touch it, but there is a feeling that people just, you know, they're, they're different. They're afraid of saying things, they're afraid of doing things, and you just enter the room one day and then the people different. Uh, this is the first one, but I realized that the, the rumor is there and that the, the wrong communication is there when I when I became the part of this rumor. So when I heard it, I realized that I didn't hear it from the leadership of the company. I didn't hear it from the leadership of the organization, but it, it came to me from, from somewhere and no one communicated it on an official level. So when these things start, people tend to not to believe what, to whatever happens. So they start to be afraid of, of their positions. They start to be afraid of their jobs. They start to be afraid of results, feedback, courage, and basically all the values we believe in, whether it's a scrum five values or, or pillars of agile, they, they, you know, they start to fail one by one. So with, with one rumor, which can be either confirmed and specific communication, specific actions can be proposed to the team, or it can be totally destroyed by saying that this is not true, please do not try to expand it anymore. This situation could be actually resolved in, in first few days, but it was escalated through a few months, I believe. And at the end, it, it, it became even worse because, you know, if, if this think leave for some time, it starts to create a kind of ecosystem around it. So people start to create second thoughts based on one thought. And when the actual announcement is there, it is, you know, it is covered by the previous thought of the people. So even if it's not that bad, people are so, uh, you know, hyped and uh, disappointed by what's coming that they can Anxious, even, you mean. And anxious, right. They, they can even take the 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 final result or final feedback as something which is even worse than it is there. So uh, it is kind of, you know, a general example and it's nothing new. And it's it was described in many, many books. It's a basic idea of five dysfunctions of a team. But the, when you don't have a trust in the team, when, when rumors start there, and even if you spot the rumor at the very beginning, just try to cope with it immediately. If not, no matter what are your intentions of not sharing this information, you'll end up in a very, very bad situation. Yeah. And how would you tackle it immediately? Now, if you could go back in time and handle this situation again, what would you do differently? How would you tackle that 
that existence, because that's that's how you described it, that existence of the belief that started with the rumor, right? Like the, the consequences on the team and what they were thinking. How would you handle that if you had the uh, magic time machine and could go back in time and, and go through this story again? So there should be an escalation, definitely, to, to the highest level possible, because as a Scrum Master, again, it is your responsibility to be bold and to be, you know, to be not afraid of anything. So if you see that there is a something that you can't handle on the team level, you need to escalate it immediately. So you see the rumor, you see that people are starting to feeling anxious, you need to say that there is a thing that X, Y, and Z is going to happen. Please, you either need to confirm or provide a further communication, because otherwise we are going to sleep and of course, it is hard to sometimes influence people on the, on, the, on the higher levels. But come with some data, probably. Like, for example, we have a release in three months. If you're not going to tackle the situation now, we're going to sleep with this release. It will cost us X amount of money and whatever. So, yeah, it, it just requires, from the moment you understand it is there, you need to try as much as possible to get what exactly is wrong and escalate it as fast as possible, because you probably is not going to have to fix it on the team level, but on the organization level, it, it, it still can be fixed. Absolutely. And leadership has a key role to play in handling this kind of uh, uh, rumors or misinformation that is going on. And uh, I, I really like what you suggested that, you know, escalate it, talk to someone who can either confirm or then the spell remove that rumor from being considered uh, uh, real or or, or uh, uh, truth, because if you don't, and that's the story you told us, if you don't, people will start to imagine the worst case possible, and there's no limits to people's imagination once they want to imagine something, yes. right? And they can imagine something to be a lot worse, a lot more consequential than in reality because they have no information. So they have to go towards the, the worst possible scenario. Yeah, yeah, and on the team level, obviously, you can work with uh, this kind of a psychological safety that even th when the rumor is there and people are, are feeling safe and they trust, then this rumor can be coped inside the team. Then you just say that, you know, guys, we've never had this before. So this is probably some, some strange idea and no one is going to implement it. Let's agree with this, this never happened. It's just a rumor. Just ignore it. But if it's actually this rumor is actually true, then your trust and your safety is completely destroyed. Yeah, and we can't do that as Scrum Masters, especially if the rumor has to do with the decisions from leadership, because yes. we don't know what decisions they have made. Yes. Right? <laughs> yeah, but but uh, the, the general idea is when when you build this safety, once you you can leverage it and actually use it if you if you believe that this these problems are not going to happen. But if but, they happen, you need to be careful because then you destroy everything you have. Correct. And, and and this is one of the, I would say, the reverse medal of extreme ownership, which is that something you don't own, you should not give uh, categorical statements yes. about. You should talk to the person who owns that and get them to make the statements, right? Because it, it isn't, if, especially if it is something to do with strategic decisions, reorganizations, transformations, whatever that is, it's not a scrum master that's going to say whether it will or it won't happen. It, it's whoever is responsible for making that decision. Exactly. Great story. Thank you for sharing that, Victor. Thank you for posting me here. Tuesday is team day here on the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast. But tomorrow we talk about something that goes beyond the work we do with the teams. We will talk about how to lead change and what our guests have learned from leading and participating in change programs during their career. See you tomorrow. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring. 